opened its first store on the Chinese mainland in 1998 in Shanghai. IKEA is about to enter its 25th year serving mainland consumers. The mainland has proved a resilient market for the company, especially during the past three years, when the COVID-19 pandemic has jeopardized retail consumption across the globe. With the development of new online purchasing channels, IKEA has seen the number of customers served here grow almost 10 times to nearly 1 billion people in just three years. We're welcoming the visitors uh, to come back to our stores and also online businesses also continuously to grow. So um, it's at least from the home furnishing point of view, uh, we consider this kind of um, a lockdown is really giving more push to the consumers to rethink about how they can live at home. The home furnishing giant has invested 10 billion yuan in China in the past three years. And its parent company, Ingoka Group, has just announced that it will invest another 5.3 billion yuan in China in its upcoming 2023 fiscal year. China is a very strategic market to IKEA globally. Uh, so this is one of the markets that provides more growth. And also we consider uh, all those leading trends, including uh, digitalization, including all the new retail formats and also customer experience, would kind of retrieve back with the new inspirations to our IKEA business model globally. Thanks to its highly concentrated supply chains, close global linkages and flourishing domestic market, China still remains a hot destination for foreign retail brands. And though the supply chains in the Yangtze River Delta region were disrupted due to the COVID-19 pandemic during the second quarter, China is still a growth engine for multinational companies. During the first seven months of the year, the foreign direct investment grew more than 17 percent year on year, indicating China's ability to attract capital is intact despite challenges threatening the recovery of the global economy. Actually, I think it's very impressive how quickly overall Shanghai has recovered. So if you look at it from a numbers perspective, you look at the July spending data, we're already back to the same sort of levels as we had in 2021. If you look at the players and operators in China, they're usually quite used to volatility. Yes, maybe not quite at this extreme, but you know, they're, used to, they're used to operating in this environment. And if you think about the multinationals, their headquarters have seen, have some perspective these days. So they saw what happened in other markets through 2020 and the early part of 2021. Towards the end of the lockdown, Oliver Wyman did a survey among leading consumer goods brands. The results showed that more than 90% of the respondents are expecting positive growth to return in 2023, a good sign of where companies will be putting their money and looking for regular customers. Zhang Shixuan, ICS for CGTN, Shanghai.